coming up ahead in this episode of X Talk Spotlight. Quest can identify by geofencing which patients, how many patients are there, who are the treating providers, who are the ordering providers. And we, re- we can really identify those providers as well as those patients and to make sure that the sites that are set up are optimizing their resources appropriately and enhancing the enrollment uh, results in that case. Hello, and welcome to X Talk Spotlight, illuminating insights from subject matter experts and industry thought leaders. I'm Sonia Hunt. In this episode, we're asking a question about supporting diversity action plans. How can Quest Diagnostics Lab data help accelerate clinical trial planning and recruitment? As the largest diagnostic lab in the U.S., Quest Diagnostics generates an enormous volume of data from an extensive range of routine and esoteric tests. This wealth of data holds immense potential to enhance clinical trials offering real-world, timely insights that can help drive success and more efficient trial processes. In this X Talk Spotlight edition, I sat down with Parag Moray, Executive Director of Healthcare Analytics Solutions for Clinical Trials at Quest Diagnostics. He shared insights into Quest's capabilities, how Quest data can enhance clinical trial planning and recruitment, and how they can support diversity action plans. Thank you for taking the time in the Spotlight interview, Parag. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Sydney. Thank you for the opportunity. Excited to be here. So to start us off, we know that Quest Diagnostics can support biopharma, but what level of support can you provide for clinical trials? Quest uh, Diagnostic does support biopharma in multiple ways. As uh, as you're aware, as, as you're probably aware, Quest Diagnostics is one of the leading lab service providers in the country. And what we do is... Uh, we support services to biopharma all the way from discovery to clinical development, all the way to the commercialization. And it really is driven by our diagnostic testing and the information that we have access to. So just to put things in con- uh, perspective, Quest performs over half a billion lab tests for almost one out of three American adults um, for a year. And that doesn't just include the routine clinical or the CBC test, but it also includes the highly specialized genetic and esoteric test. What we have been able to do is uh, collect that data over the last 15 years, normalize, standardize, make it fit for use for over 70 billion test results. And that information is used to provide a lot of the services, data-driven services to biopharma. And clinical trials specifically, we believe that we have a critical role to play because in the United States alone, more than 80% of the clinical trials fail to achieve their enrollment targets, right? 30% of the target, 30% of the study participants discontinue the participations. So with Quest, ad scale access to data with our patient and provider relationships and the medical expertise, we believe that we can provide really deep services to biopharma. And can you give more details on how Quest data can be used in clinical trial planning and recruitment? Absolutely. So as, as we were talking about in the clinical research scenario, where when we have almost more than 300 million patients across US that we are providing clinical testing for. And when you took it looking at, looking at the clinical research and the care continuum, you know, per CDC, I think 70% of the clinical decisions are made based on the diagnostic testing. So what we are able to do is use that information and identify patients who would be good candidates for enrollment plan the logistics around how each clinical trial sites can be set up, how PI or the sub-I or the principal investigators or the provider community can be engaged. So we are able to provide a lot of insight into those. The best way to do that is taking an example. So let's just take an example of uh, chronic kidney disease. So if you look at the chronic kidney disease prevalence in the United States, more than one out of seven adults, so that's around 35 million patients, 35 million people are estimated to have CKD. And there is an awareness issue because out of uh, that population, as many as nine out of 10 CKD patients, they don't even know they have it. And about one out of three adults, they don't even know that they have the severe CKD. So where Quest comes in from helping in the clinical trials situation, so let's say somebody is running a clinical trial and there's quite a bit running in the CKD space, where they want to manage the progression toward, towards the advanced stages of CKD, 
I think the quest has the information, access to information based on the diagnostic testing. So in case of CKD, EGFR, the created in levels play a critical role. What we are able to do is if somebody is running a study for CKD, first we can help them identify based on the data and the prevalence, uh, which sites should they be planning for? Which sites should they be selecting for their uh, research activities and the, which PIs would be the right PIs, the principal investigators. And this is more of a real world data informing the site selection in the clinical trial and the PI uh, recruitment is not just based on the real sort of the claims based uh, information. So that's where we can help significantly. And once you set up your sites, your clinical research programs, the sites, all the infrastructure and your protocols, what we can do is it's important to make sure that the, the patients are recruited in those uh, uh, clinical trials and they are brought to those sites. So around those sites, Quest can identify by geofencing, which patients, how many patients are there, who are the treating providers, who are the ordering providers. And we, really, we can really identify those providers as well as those patients and to make sure that the sites that are set up are optimizing their resources appropriately and enhancing the enrollment uh, results in that case. Now, we learned that Quest can help identify the most qualified trial participants through clinical and demographic data, but is there any other way Quest can help support recruitment or enrollment? That's a great question because identifying, using the data and the insights to identify the patients of the providers is just a starting. So there's still a last mile, which is how do we connect the patients? How do we communicate with the patients? And that's where Quest, as a trusted healthcare consumer brand and a healthcare provider, that's where our strength comes in. So what we typically do is, based on the inclusion exclusion criteria, we'll identify the demographics and clinical, and we'll find the eligible patients. And not only just stop there, but based on the IRB approved collateral, we will create a communication message to our patients. We do direct to patient outreach, and that's not the direct to patient outreach on a personal level. So we send out the emails, we can send out the notifications and alerts in our MyQuest apps that is used by more than, uh, that's used by millions of patients um, today. And we can let them know that, hey, you might be qualified for this clinical research. If you're interested, click here and go through the, 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 the enrollment process with the site, right? That's what the second part is. Quest has a strong retail presence for awareness, right? I think awareness, clinical trial awareness, is a critical issue, right? Many people don't have access to the clinical trial, even if they they would like to. And in that case, we can use our retail presence to make build the awareness uh, toward the patient population. And all of this is leading to the uh, the sponsors, site uh, sites, and the enrollment processes. That's one aspect for patient communication. But the critical part that we can absolutely do is about the physician outreach, right? Because as the recent study that I came across, research shows that out of seven out of 10 patients would be interested or they would agree to participate in the clinical trial if the communication or the direction is coming from their physicians. So this is especially true in the rare diseases or in oncology trials where uh, reaching out to providers and making them aware that they may have the patients that are good candidates for certain clinical trial in their area is important. And what we can do is we can directly communicate to the providers uh, as well. Using our medical expertise as well as our credibility and the relationship, we can provide uh, communication to the, the physicians as well. And if you, if, you, if you just look at it, right, overall, I think we take multiple channels uh, approach, omni-channel approach to communicate for the, the recruitment. But in addition to that, uh, I'm sure you, you, some 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 of you some of you uh, may have uh, read the recent revision and uh, the guidance from FDA for the diversity action plan. Because of the demographic information that we have, we are clearly able to make an impact and help sponsors and sites meet their recruitment goal to make sure that there is a representative population participating in their trial. And can you summarize how Quest will be able to support diversity in clinical trials and speak to the new guidance from the FDA? In June 2024, FDA, FDA revised and published uh, new gu guidance for around the diversity action plan. And the goal or the, the intent of that gui the guidance is the sponsors, the research sponsors are expected to set some recruitment goals for racial, uh, for racial and ethnically diverse group 
and stratified by their age and their gender. I think the, the, the it's not just about the recruitment, but the goal here is how do um, these the population has more equitable and timely access to research and the therapies? That's one. But the informi- informing the the safe and the effective use of the medical product or the therapy that they're, de- they're developing that is representative of the actual population who would be taking it. And that are, those goals, of course, have have to be epidemiologically aligned with the prevalence of the condition, right? So that's the diversity action plan, and that's the intent. Right? The industry has always faced that issue, and you know, they, uh, a lot of the sponsors have made great strides. But this new diversity action plan, revised diversity action plan, gives critical sort of a it, it does more of the incentive alignment, and it gives clear goals uh, that the sponsors can work with. Where Quest can help is that if you just look at the the use cases that we were talking about earlier. Trial planning and design, setting if you're selecting your sites and setting the enrollment goals, that's one. And recruiting the patients, that's second, right? So if you look at it, the, the trial planning and design phase, if you're setting the enrollment goals that are based on the diversity action plan that you are developing for your clinical research, we can look at our patient population, the demographic information that we have, or the, the geographics, the census based the geographies uh, that we have access to, and we can let you know what are the realistic goals to even reach that population? That's one. And when you're talking about the recruitment part of it, we have a direct relationship with these patients. We have the relationship with uh, their providers. You know, we have the, the the relationship not only in through the patients and the providers directly, but we typically have retail centers and the presence where they shop, live, or socialize. But we can use all of that to make sure that there is more awareness, access and timely information given for all these, um, you know, sort of a socioeconomically diverse, racially, ethnically diverse groups to make them aware of these research opportunities. And, you know, just to summarize, I think we believe Quest has a critical role to play. So we are happy to partner with um, our sponsors as well as the CRO partners to, to make sure that we are able to make some meaningful difference in this space. Looking ahead, what plans does Quest have for the future to support clinical trial planning and recruitment? So as far as the future plan goes, I think, you know, as as we've discussed so far, I think the as a household trusted healthcare provider, we have a critical role and it's both mission driven as well as making a difference in the clinical research space, right? We have high aspirations to continue to make these meaningful contributions and continue to work with sponsors directly or the service providers, whether it be CROs or point service providers. A couple of areas that we are really investing. The first one is the advanced analytics. As you know, I think that no conversation or no discussion is complete with um, uh, without uh, understanding the technological and the AI and machine learning and generative AI, all this advanced analytics techniques that uh, are growing in the industry. And we are, we are, we are, we want to be at the forefront of that. So what we are trying to do is how can we use the, the advanced analytics technologies, the AI, the artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques to, to make our data met more fit for use. So the less and less, info, less, and less effort is uh, built or spent on investing on data curation, but building the applications out of it. So a couple of examples that we have invested quite a bit so as, as most of the healthcare participants know that uh, when it comes to diagnostic testing, let's take an example of path reports, pathology reports. A lot of the critical information about diagnosis, the, the, the mutations or, or certain biomarker information are buried deep down in the path reports, whether it be anatomic pathology or molecular results. A lot of those valuable information is buried down in path reports, pathology reports, right? What we're doing is we're using advanced uh, AI and the advanced natural language processing, NLP techniques to extract that information and make it discrete so it can be combined with other types of testing, right? Whether it's other esoteric testing or other kinds of testing um, uh, from a simple simple clinical testing. So we are trying, we are investing quite a bit to make sure that all of that, the wealth of information that we have can be used. The second part that we are investing quite a bit, just this is just an example, I think we have multiple use cases, is that we are trying to build a, a digital twin and uh, 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 from an artificial intelligence where 
how can we make a meaningful impact so that we are just not working on the data and the information that we have from a retrospective analysis, but also projecting and in ensuring that we are into the preventive space or predicting which patients are moving in, which disease progression. So that's one of the critical parts that we are uh, investing quite a bit in. And you know, we are we are uniquely positioned because you know because of the two things we have access to the the data uh, uh, at scale as well as uh, we have the medical expertise. Uh, to be able to make use of that. So we're really excited to make use of this emerging advanced analytics, AI, machine learning techniques, how we can make use of those in the clinical trial space. And to wrap up, we talked a lot about data and the solutions Quest has to support clinical trial planning and recruitment, but are there any other solutions Quest provides to support clinical trials? Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I think the core at core of Quest is the diagnostic testing. So we talked a lot about the data and the analytics and how it can inform the clinical trials. But the critical part is, as we are moving into the decentralized, as the model is being flipped, where instead of drawing patients to the sites, now the sites are getting closer to where the patients are, right? So that's the concept of the decentralized trial. So what we can do is we often uh, support a lot of offerings for decentralized trial, whether it's through the diagnostic testing or the companion diagnostic, uh, we pro provide a lot of the services and make sure that our testing services can be used in the trials more effectively and more efficiently uh, so the patients can uh, take benefit of when they're in trial. We have a business unit called Exam 1 within Quest where we can provide the mobile phlebotomy uh, as well, whether it's uh, at home or at one of the test centers or locations uh, that the patients reside in. So we provide those services to our clinical trial partners as well. We make use of, uh, you know, our, uh, we can make use of our uh, patient service centers. We have more than 2,200 patient service centers, which are typically in retail locations. So increasing access of patients to these clinical trials and uh, is critical in using that retail space. And once the patients are in the trial, right, I think it's, it's critical to retain them, right? I think, as I had mentioned earlier, I think around 30% of the, the patients that enrolled in trial, they... Uh, leave the trials for whatever reason, non-medical reasons, right? So we have a, a, a business unit at Quest called Pack Health um, that can allow, that provides services, more of these engagement services and retention services so that the patient can have sort of white girl glove, personalized, warm uh, partner in their clinical research journey. So they provide services there. So it's not just about the one handoff, but making sure that we're making it easier for the patients to understand the process, to understand what this means to them, as well as pro providing and giving them some coaching throughout the process. So that's something that we can provide as well for the clinical trials community. Well, thank you very much, Parag, for speaking with us today. We really appreciate your time and insights. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the conversation. And on behalf of Quest, uh, I appreciate uh, the interest that you guys have shown in the clinical trial and what we can offer. Um, we continue, we believe that we have a critical role to play and we'll uh, continue to uh, play that role. So I appreciate the opportunity. We look forward to learning more about Quest's work for clinical trial planning and recruitment. Thank you all for joining us for this X Talk Spotlight feature. We hope you enjoyed the discussion.